I'm Christopher Nolikin at Bulger Veterinary Hospital. Hi, I'm Lindsay Benzulo. Talking today about allergies and pets. Spaying and neutering your pet. Pet weight management. And we're going to talk today about pet summer fun and safety. You can... uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but doctor. Mm -hmm. so she says, I you got good, good girl. You got a lot of treats. A, a lot of TV treats. Up on that table. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to the podcast. I'm Dr. Christopher Nolikin. I'm Dr. Lindsay Renzulo. We're here today with Patty McCrudden, who's the operator of Bark of the Town Grooming, which is a local grooming shop in our uh, our town yeah. right near Bulger. So yeah. why don't you tell us a little bit about your shop? So Bark of the Town is located on Route 114 in North Andover. We've been in business for 13 years now. There are four certified groomers that are on staff. We have... Uh, two, three bather uh, helpers, uh, bather groomer helpers. Um, we groom all different types of dogs. We also do cats. Um, not sure what else I can tell you. That's, That's good. good. <laughs> That's plenty. <laughs> That's good. Actually, I think she's one of our first <coughs> guests, too, on the podcast. I think she's our first guest. Which is very exciting yeah. to very have exciting. you here. So we're, Thank we're you for having me. We're happy yeah. to have you. Um, so as far as you know, your shop goes, you basically you're the owner of it. So did you start it, or did you buy it, or how how did you sort of come come to be a groomer, come to own Bark of the Town? Tell us a little bit about it. Okay, so my background actually is in occupational therapy. Oh, very so interesting. So I came from a uh, healthcare background. Yeah. Um, I also did have for a short term I had like a dog sitting and walking service um, when I got out of healthcare. And I knew I wanted to stay involved somehow with pets, but I knew I didn't want to become a veterinarian. I didn't want to be a vet tech. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to do something more hands-on. Yeah. So I did a little bit of research online, found some grooming programs. I went to one. Um, it was a certified grooming program in New Jersey. It was basically... A, I'm from oh, New Jersey. Yeah. Oh, all right. New <laughs> so, Jersey pride. <laughs> so it was basically a one-on-one -on -one grooming apprenticeship wow. with, in a shop. It was a private shop, um, and at the end of that, um, you have to take a written and then a practical test. Basically, how to handle dogs, you know, how to restrain dogs, obviously, how to groom the dogs. Right. Um, and then you can go out on your own. I knew from early on that I wasn't going to be able to work for somebody for too long. So yeah. I started, when I started, I didn't feel like I could just open up my own, pra my own, my own place. Right. Um, so I took a job. Um, I worked there for, I, I want to say, two or three years, but in the meantime, I found a location that had a, a tub already set up. Yeah. Um, I, uh, you know, like, worked there one day, one day a week, and I worked five days a week someplace else, and then I slowly, you know, changed the progression of, you know, three days, and then two days, and then I was finally full-time mm -hmm. doing my own thing. So um, I started in Andover. Yeah. Um, I started, started in downtown Andover in 2005. I was in Andover for about seven and a half years. Then I moved over to Route 114. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I rented a place to see how the transition from moving from Andover to North Andover would be. Uh, I was there for two years, and in the meantime, I bought the present location that we have now, which is uh, 607 Turnpike Street. It's super cute because it was a house. I mean, it was a house. Know. It was a house. I converted it into a, a grooming shop. I definitely do not live there. That's mm -hmm. one of the questions that I get. Mm -hmm. um, so all of the grooming takes place on the second floor. Uh, the first floor is check-in. There's a little bit of retail, yeah. leashes, collars. Um, we're not a retail s store. We are purely grooming. That's yeah. what we know. Yeah. Um, so, And I think the thing that sets Bark of the Town off from other, other grooming shops, because there's a lot of grooming shops, and I think they're all good. It's yeah. not like you know one shop is better than the other. But the thing that is different about Bark of the Town is with the four groomers, we all have at least 10 years of experience. Mm, yeah. um, so everybody is, is well versed in dealing with difficult dogs, dealing with puppies, dealing with older dogs, dogs that have um, uh, medical conditions. Um, so there's that. The other thing is, is we don't crate the dogs if they get along with other dogs. Obviously, we have to create yeah. the dogs to dry them because not all dogs are going to stand there and let, let us use a blow dryer on them. So they do have to go into a crate for a, yeah. um, you know, 
an indeterminate amount of time. It right. depends on it depends on the coat of the dog. Um, and then once they're once they're dry, we put them out on the floor as long as they get along with other dogs. I never ask you if Lucy gets along with the other dog. My dog goes to Bark of the Town for grooming. So <laughs> well, never know. She Lucy's, gets to go. Lucy's a little Lucy's special. A little special. <laughs> Does Lucy's she go around with the other dog? She seems happy when she comes home. So. Lucy <laughs> is out for a little bit with the other dogs, but unfortunately, the we can't dogs. get her attention since she's hard of hearing. Yes. Um, <laughs> so it's it's difficult to yes. round her up. Um, so a lot of these dogs, then you're not drying them like on the table, or you are drying. We depending. okay. So yeah. so the grooming process is mm. the dogs come in. Yep. Um, all the 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 dogs are not done start to finish. Okay. So people think, well, you know, I'm dropping off. I dropped off my dog at eight o'clock. Why is I it see. one o'clock and the dog's still not ready? And because when you go to get your hair done, you know, your hairdresser washes your hair and then they do start to finish. When a dog is groomed. There are so many dogs that are coming in, we can't do one dog start to finish. Mobile groomers can do that because they're just working on one dog. But we have the dogs dropped off first thing in the morning. They all come in, oh, they're, all, they're all bathed, they're dried, then they go into a crate, they're hand dried yep. to get most of the water off. Then they go into a crate to dry. And then we pull them out as they finish being dried, they go onto the table, they're groomed. The grooming would involve obviously the bathing, there's a conditioning treatment. We clean and pluck ears if need be. Yep. Trim their nails. They can either be clipped or ground, depending on what the dog will allow. Um, and then there's breed standard haircuts that are included. So um, that's why you know it's like, oh my gosh, I dropped my dog off like five hours ago. Right. Why is my dog still here? Yeah. Which is another benefit to having if your dog gets along with, if your dog gets along with other dogs, having them socialize. Mm -hmm. Because what I've found is the dogs then they're you know they're not like oh my god I'm going to the I'm going to the groomer right, I'm stuck a in a place. I'm stuck in a crate right. for eight hours or right. four hours or whatever it is if they get along with the other dogs they can socialize also a little so, bit like toddlers like then yeah. maybe they're a little more amenable for you to handle them right? exactly yeah. which is why an, I think another thing I don't know that it sets us apart but I do try and stress when we have puppies or new dogs that come in um, we want dogs we want to start seeing dogs right after their second set of puppy shots yeah so it's another question that I get all the time. When should I get my dog groomed? The sooner the better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Obviously, when you get a dog at eight weeks old or 10 weeks old, that's too soon to bring him. Yeah. You want to bond a little bit with your dog. The dog's immune system isn't strong enough to be around other dogs. Mm -hmm. God forbid there's a dog that comes in that, that has something going on that right. we don't know about it. Your dog, you want to make sure your dog is healthy, so you want to check with you guys, check with your veterinarian. I generally think that's somewhere around 14 weeks, 12, 14 weeks, depending on whatever the protocols yeah. that you yeah. follow. Um, we say bring them in. Get them in, get them used to the sounds, get them used to being handled, get them used to the other dogs, yeah. get them used to being around people. Um, because what I've found is the earlier we can get them and make it a positive experience, the better, the better it is for you guys at home, mm -hmm. the better it is for us to be able to handle the dog. You know, some dogs don't like their feet being touched. Right, right, right. So, and we can tell you, okay, your dog did great, your puppy did great. Or, you know what, maybe bring your puppy back in in another week, not to be groomed, to hang out, get used mm -hmm. to, the, just so it's an easier transition when you drop off. Mm -hmm. So and for a lot of these like specialized haircuts, and maybe I'm jumping ahead, but I can't no, wait to go ask, ahead. but like some yeah. of these specialized haircuts, like for breed standards, do you guys have like a giant book there that you're kind of like referencing or going back to? Like, is there <coughs> techniques and ways in which you're cutting that hair to kind of make it, yes. or their coats to make it look the way that it should look? So yes. with with the dogs that require haircuts. Yep. So obviously there's two types of dogs. Right. You've got your hair dogs and you've got your fur dogs. So the hair dogs, there is a breed standard. It's, uh, it's a, an actual grooming Bible, if you will, yeah. of um, breed standard haircuts. Mm -hmm. So you can reference that book. We have one at the shop. I'm a, I would assume that most grooming shops do have that. But once you've come out of grooming school yeah. or you've been trained on the job, you know what the breed standard clip is. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I mean, maybe you'll get, you know, um, an odd dog that comes in or odd breed dog right, that yep, comes in yep. and you don't see a lot. And you might have to, you know, you know, make like reference to the book. But typically most, you know how to groom most dogs. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, we're in an industry or we're in an area, I should say, where we don't have a lot of show dogs. I mean, there mm -hmm. are show dogs obviously right. out there. I mean, if you watch Westminster, there were a couple dogs from the, you know, the Massachusetts area. But right now, the dogs that we're seeing they're pet they're pets yeah. they're not show yeah. dogs they're yeah. most people don't want the show dog okay. they want their dog 
they want their dog to be functional. like a functional <laughs> haircut. Yeah. Right. You know, you don't want to, you don't, you know, like the Bichon just won Westminster, right? Right. I mean, <laughs> I do not want that. I mean, come on, <laughs> who wants to be dealing with all that hair? Because right. you're yeah. basically combing that like twice right. a day right. Right. in order to keep it from matting. So that's sort so of, the, is that the puppy cut? Like the, so, and that, yeah. no, that's, that? a, that's that? another that? misnomer. What People is come that? in Tell all the time. Right. Puppy cut. They yeah. say puppy yeah. cut. People come in all the time. Oh, I, you know, I just, I just want puppy cut. Yeah. Okay. What, ex what, what exactly is puppy cut? Because I don't know Could you be more specific, please? So a puppy cut to a groomer means same length all over. Okay. A puppy cut to a person who owns the dog, I'm I not sure that. what they mean, right. Right. but they hear that. Oh, I, my wife just said to puppy cut him. Okay. So, and I'll say, and a puppy cut means that you want us to cut the dog the same length all over, but how long would you like him? Would you like yeah. us to take off an inch? Mm -hmm. Would you like right. to have an inch left on? So there, and in the beginning, when you first see puppies or when people are rescuing some of these dogs, which is great rescue a dog, you don't know how the dog's supposed to look. Right. So it's beneficial when, I love when people come in and they don't have a clue about what they want. Yeah. Because then you can say, listen, how often do you want to be here? Do you mm -hmm. want to come every four weeks? Right. Do you want to come every other week? Right. Do you want to push this off as long as you can? That's going to help us determine how long or how short to keep your dog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you were saying you're growing cats too. Like how, what percentage do you think of your clientele are cats? Not a lot. Um, I mean, I own four cats. I comb the cats now okay. as they're getting older, but most cats do mo their own grooming. Yeah. I've the never Persians. Brought my cat in for grooming. Yeah, I mean. Is it mainly for the cats that just they get matted? And they the get matted. Hair you'll you'll yeah. see like the Persians, the Himalayans, yep. the rag dolls, so the longer-haired cats. Yeah. Most dom domestic short-haired cats, if we see them, we're doing a nail trim. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or we're, you know, doing a quick comb out. I see. Um, so there are people, though, that have cats, and because of all the shedding, because of allergies, yeah. we're ended up doing lion cuts. Mm -hmm. um, we're just doing shave downs. Or some of the older cats, even the domestic long-haired cats, some of those, as they age, they're not yeah. grooming as well, so they'll get mats, like, yeah. along their back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so we'll just kind of spot shave stuff. Or We only do cats at 730 in the morning. Oh, we before have the, the dogs before come. the dogs come to idea. make it less mm -hmm. stressful. Yeah. So they come in at 7:30 and they're out by eight. I have one groomer who's been grooming for about 19, 20 years now. She enjoys grooming the cats. Yeah. So um, we you do have to make sure as as with dogs that updated on especially rabies for cats and yeah. then all their other vaccinations for the dogs. You know, mm -hmm. um, before they come in to be groomed. But they, so so cats are a smaller percentage. Yeah. I, 10, 15 percent of okay. the majority of the um, the majority of our clientele are dogs. So. Do you have any other any other species come in for grooming or no? Not really. So we've ha we chinchilla. have had yeah, <laughs> we have like not had a chinchilla. <laughs> we have had um, I've had a pot belly pig come in for a nail trim. For nail yeah, trim. Sunny. fantastic. Yep, and then we've also had um, rabbits come in for nail trims. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. But we've had uh, uh, I want to say like four or five years ago we did have um, someone who brought in their parakeet or pa a parrot for like a nail, um, a wing trim. Oh. But I don't have somebody who does any of yeah. that right now. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That's which is fine by me. Yeah. 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 Um, so what, uh, what breed do you think of as being just a, the most challenging to, to groom? Mm. When, some, when someone schedules that appointment with you, you're like, oh. It's a good question. Or is it a type of dog? Like, like yeah. just the personality? Okay, the personalities. so yeah. it's more, I mean, obviously, the big hairy dogs. Yeah. So like a big the, new feed, do you like, oh, that's going to take so long. I mean, not that you wouldn't happily do it. Right. But, or is it collies? It's funny you should say that. We have a, a load. A lot of collies. Of, of, we have Shelties. a Leonberger in today. Oh, we have, yeah. We have, so that's uh, a big dog for those of you. Yeah, it looks like big. a ginormous shepherd. Yeah. yeah. Who is the sweetest dog, but a lot of coat. Yeah. So, so we have a lot of hairy dogs in today. So that's. You kind of cringe when you see, oh my gosh, because it's going to take that much longer to yeah. bathe them and that much dry. longer to dry them. Yeah. Um, so I don't think that there's a particular breed that is, ugh, except like the Newfies. I mean, it's, they're they're they're, they're just like big. 195 yeah. pounds. I mean, some of these yeah, dogs. Saint Bernards. I mean, they don't have a lot of hair, but they got a lot of dog. All right. the face stuff. Yeah. Too, yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it, it's interesting. I think because when I first started out, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't stand doing whatever the dog was. Right. Uh, a poodle. Mm -hmm. um, if I have to do, you know, it's clean, so, yeah. like the clean feet, because it's just so time consuming. Mm -hmm. 
but poodles are very they're very good to groom because right. most of them they're used to just standing there yeah. Mo the majority of them are um, I would have to say that there isn't a particular breed that is more or less difficult to groom it's more the personality of the dog mm -hmm. and again I go back to starting the dog early mm -hmm. handling the dog getting the dog used to it making sure it's a positive positive experience wherever you go um, that really m will make or break a, a groomer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there are dogs that you know you see th that come from rescue, so you don't know what happened right. to them. And there are some dogs that just do not like to be groomed. I mean, yeah. we see p some puppies that just come in and yeah. they're from day one. They don't want it. They yeah. don't want it. Mm -hmm. So if you do have those dogs that are really, you know, challenging from a personality standpoint, do you um, do sometimes the owners sedate them beforehand? Do you mm. talk to the vets about giving them something? Yes. S typically, what happens is say we get a puppy that's coming in for the first time or we uh, a, a dog Any that's dog. new to us yeah. Yeah. not even a puppy yeah um, if we notice that the dog seems to be particularly stressed um, something you know the sound of the vacuum cleaner the sound mm -hmm. of the blow dryer mm -hmm. is really stressing the dog out and we feel like in order to safely groom the dog we think you should talk with your veterinarian about giving them a little happy pill yeah. <laughs> before they come in. Um, we, do have a, we do have a fair number of uh, dogs that do have to be sedated. Mm -hmm. We don't do the sedation. That's, yeah. I don't know, it's some kind of a misnomer that we're going to like drug your dog in the back room mm -hmm. or something. But that yeah. definitely needs to come from you guys, from mm -hmm. the veterinarians. Um, and I'd like to have an open conversation with the people about that so there's no surprises. It's not like, you know, Oh, this is the first time I'm hearing that you right. can't groom my dog. Mm -hmm. Like, right. we, we try and be pretty upfront with people. And it's hard to say that to somebody. I'm sorry, you know, we love your dog, or your dog is a great dog, but your dog does not like to be groomed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And safely, for, in order to safely get him groomed or her groomed, you should probably talk with your vet. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people kind of know that, though. Like, even if they come into the, the mm -hmm. hospital and they need a nail trim, these are, could be really nice dogs, and the minute that you go to try to trim their nails, right. they turn into Cujo, Do you think you know? that people know that? I think that some people say, I can't do well, it do, at home. Well, do all I parents, can't do it do at all home. parents think that their kids are good? My, child's are, my, my children, children are, are perfect, perfect say, right? <laughs> and it's the exact same thing. <laughs> right. So, so I think so that there are, <laughs> there, are a fair, there are a fair number of people yeah. that they do have a good yes, handle yeah. on their dog. But then there are some people that it's almost like it, they think it's a reflection on them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, it's not. It's This is the makeup of your dog. Right. Or you also know? their dog maybe has not been in that situation <clears throat> and they haven't right. seen it themselves. Right. So, yeah. Or they don't even try to do it. They might not even, they might not feel comfortable doing nail trims at home so they right. just assume that you can do it right. and they have no idea that once sometimes the dog we gets see that Sometimes we see dogs that have come from other shops or the people have moved from, you know, moved to the area. Right. And uh, like when the dog comes in, I'll talk with the client. So, any issues with grooming? Right. Do they get along with other dogs? Are there any allergies? Do we right. need to be aware of anything that, you, that your mm -hmm. previous groomer has told you? Oh, no, my dog's perfect. My dog's mm -hmm. fine. Most times, people will be pretty upfront with mm -hmm. us. The difficult or the challenging thing is when we groom the dog and then we're like, oh, geez, you know, we have to muzzle the dog for the nails, which is fine. Right. But we say that on, you know, when the dog's being picked up and people are like, oh, you know what? You're right. <laughs> he doesn't like that. He did try and take the last groomer out. <laughs> that would be important information yeah. to tell the groomer. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it is a little challenging when I have talked with owners and I have said, you know, could you please ask your right. veterinari veterinarian yeah. for a little happy pill the next time they come in? Yeah. Um, and, you know, vets will say, oh, just give him some Benadryl. Yeah. You know, if yeah, it's Benadryl a Benadryl, yeah, if it's Benadryl, a Benadryl issue, I'm not going to ask you right, for it. Right to get the dog sedation. Right, right. Um, so, uh, but for on the whole, yeah. you know, we really don't have an issue, which is good. Now with your, you know, at the top of the show, you were sort of talking about um, your shop with your very experienced groomers that you have and your certification process that you went mm -hmm. through. You know, is it something where all grooming facilities need to have certified groomers that work in the facility or can anybody just start grooming a dog? That's a good question. Um, since there are no state licensing regulations, Mm. currently for groomers um, my assumption would be that any of the grooming facilities would have to have a certified or should have a certified groomer on staff yeah 
whether or not you have to have those credentials in order to open one, I can't specifically say. I would say you probably don't because there isn't, you mm. know, a yeah, governing body. The National Dog Groomers Association is pushing for licensing and for all people to be mm -hmm. certified. You know, whether that passes on a state level, we have yet to see. I know for myself, the reason I chose to go to a certified school was because I knew that I wasn't going to stay working for somebody my entire career. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I think you just, it, it, to have the credential behind you is something that is important. Yeah. So the certification or the license, it's not certification. Licensed. Certification is through the National Dog Groomers Association, yes. and they I, provide you know, that. They yes. I mean that's who mine was through, and mm -hmm. that's you know like I said, you would do you do a practical, and then you do a written mm -hmm. test. Mm -hmm. um, I know like at some of the Petco's and the PetSmart, they have their own program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My assumption is that you're certified through them mm -hmm. then to do um, to 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 groom safely coming from a Petco or a PetSmart to someplace else, I don't, you know, that also looks good because yeah. at least you've had a formal training right. program. Um, but I don't know of other places in the, actually, that's not true. I think there's a place up in New Hampshire um, mm. that does, that certifies some groomers now yeah. too. Nice. Well, do you have any other like tips for, you know, all of our viewers at home or any other like? I think, I think the biggest tip, um, the biggest tip is to basically to, it's never, t it's, I shouldn't say it's never too early. Err on the side of bringing your dog into a groomer sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the biggest misnomer out there is that, oh, my dog doesn't need to be groomed. It doesn't need a haircut. Labs, beagles, pugs, shepherds, they all shed. Yep. Gr the grooming process, all it's going to do is probably cut down on maybe 50 to 60 percent of the of the shedding it's yeah. not going to right. eliminate it but it definitely helps the hair pickup mm -hmm. you know I mean you see uh, different seasons in the year it can be a little bit it can be a little bit more in the spring you'll see the shedding but all dogs need to be groomed yeah. because they all need a bath they all need their ears cleaned they all need their t toenails trimmed and I think you know, I, I have clients that come in that, like, have goldens. Oh, and my breeder told me to, to bathe my dog once a year. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you're only taking a bath once a year, you're going to stink. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> if your dog's living outside, I guess that's fine. But I think the biggest thing is it's good for the dog yeah. on a social level, on a physical level. I mean, um, so the sooner that you can start bringing your dog in and, and a, you know, and just you know, having him experience or her experience all this stuff, I think the better for the animal. Mm -hmm. The best advice that I got when I first had my, um, my first dog as an adult, which is uh, Barney, who was the guy in the logo, was in the first hundred days that you get your dog, expose them to a hundred different people, a hundred different um, situations, and, and just you'll have a, you'll have a well-balanced dog. Mm -hmm. So if you're bringing your dog into a groomer once a year, and you're wondering right. why they're nervous when they come in, and it's because they're not they're not experiencing it. You say you know? the same thing for yeah, same thing for, for vets, vet off, yeah. for vet yeah. offices, for everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We yeah. tell them to come in sometimes and just get a cookie, just walk in, just to just have a or experience. something. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's why yeah. one of the things that one of the other things that Bark of the Town offers is when the puppies come in, like I was saying earlier, we'll say drop your dog off once a week, just toss them through the door, let them yeah. get used to all the sounds and the smells. Mm -hmm. And then they look at it as, okay, this isn't a place that I'm going where oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be wet, I'm going to be manhandled, or you know, right, my fingernails are going to be, you know, it's it's more of a positive experience. Mm -hmm. We have puppies who have been coming in, or now dogs that have been coming in for eight years, and they just come by once a week, or they could be here twice a week. Yeah. They just come in, they hang out. Well, that's nice. The socialization, like you'd said, they it all kind of hang out together, which is really nice. They need yeah. it. They yeah. all need it. Oh, well, we really appreciate it. We're, it was well, very so nice having, having a me. guest. We loved having a guest on the show. This is great. <laughs> well, come back. Our first guest. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, so thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. So, our next segment is going to be a little spot on marijuana toxicity. We'll join you back in a second. So, we were going to talk about marijuana toxicity. Um, you know, marijuana is in the news quite a lot just with all the legalization in yeah. various states, some recreational, some medical. Um, but have you seen a lot of 
cases of ingestion. Yeah, so it is something that we're actually, I, I think we're going to start seeing much more of, considering mm -hmm. that it is going to become more legal, more accessible for a lot of people. It's something that has been around, obviously, forever, um, or for a very long time. Well, I don't know, forever. <laughs> forever for me <laughs> practicing. Um, and the toxicity with marijuana can look really scary to dog owners. And right. so, you know, you do tend to see it on an emergency basis, you know, so the owners are, sometimes they understand that the dogs has, has ingested something, but probably the more scary cases are the people who they, they don't know. Well, what's the classic, like, so I always see, so classically when pot was very much a, a you know, just illegal, it's a drug, oh my God, it's so yes. terrible. You have this very straight laced <laughs> couple and they say, I don't know what's happening. My you know, my dog is just acting this way. And then you, you ask them, do you have any children? And they're like, yeah, I have a teenage son. He just came home from college. He had a party last <laughs> night. Just a few <laughs> friends over. That's the time when well, you and see Well, it's even nerve-wracking because when they come in on the emergency, when they come in, the way that a dog will look while they're high is, um, is, is can be very confusing with some more serious neurologic issues. And so you can see these patients coming in that are ataxic, so they're not necessarily walking appropriate, they're kind of stumbling. Um, they can be mentally inappropriate, so they are kind of zoning off sort of and dull. dull, and they're maybe looking at the ground. And they they're might usually peeing all over themselves. They're just right? dribbling just urine. They're just dribbling urine. Um, and they can, you can kind of rouse them and wake them up and they kind of come to, but they might be like trembling a little bit or shaking a bit. So they can look very scary for somebody that doesn't necessarily know what they got into. They think, oh my gosh, they're having a stroke or they're having some sort of right. severe, significant neurologic, you know, problem. Um, and, and I think a lot of the time that's because, you know, they are inherently a lot smaller. So you're talking about a dose that a person would take. A person doesn't necessarily look like that when they're high, but a dog is getting a dose that is way higher for its uh, a milligram per pound dose for them. And I feel like a lot of times when people are natural or people are voluntarily ingesting it, they understand that their body is going to feel maybe a little bit weird. Yeah. Um, and a dog, you know, really doesn't have that same uh, mental ability to understand that what's going on is, is okay and is normal. And so they get a little bit more um, weirded out. So, um, so yeah. So what do we do you, for them? So when you see, so it's, Kind Supportive. of easy. Yeah. I mean, you can have, I mean, there are, you know, there are the potential of fatal toxicities, but geez, I don't even think they have it I've published in it, the yeah. literature as far as it. I mean, anything really could be fatal because you ate enough of it, but for the most part, it's just supportive care. So these pets will get better. Um, sometimes we give them fluids. Sometimes we just sort of have them go home and sleep it off if they're not really super, mm -hmm. super sick. Um, but a lot of times it's just kind of supportive care and letting them, letting that drug sort of, um, you know, metabolize and get out of their yeah. system. But it can look really, really scary. So, um, you know, point being is that, you know, you can also be upfront with the vets. Um, it's not something that we, we have to inform law enforcement or anything. Just let us know if they've gotten into it so that way we can handle it. Um, and, and it's actually a lot less concerning to us once we know what we're dealing with, right. as opposed to us having to feel like, geez, there's going to be some significant issues. I'm going to have to start looking for things. I'll have to do blood work and all this stuff. Well, I mean, that's the thing that has oftentimes for us, like gotten people to just be a little more honest with themselves or with us about this as a potential is like, listen, it's either pot, which I can tell you will be fine, yeah. or we have to spend perhaps $4,000 in diagnostic tests, MRIs, all of that thing. So you know, it's, it's definitely better, and, yeah. a better diagnosis. Better diagnosis for sure. And um, yeah, so just let us know and we can help you and your pet. So, so that's it for today from the podcast. I'm Christopher Nolikin. I'm Lindsay Renzullo. Thank you for joining us. Um, don't forget to email us any of your questions that you may have. And oh, we'll by the way, our email address wasn't working, but we're fixing it. So oh. if you did email us, try us again in a couple of days. Good to know. <laughs> yes, it wasn't working. <laughs> All right. So we'll see you next time. Thank you so much.